Om namo bhagavati vasudevaya. Om namo bhagavati vasudevaya. Om namo bhagavati vasudevaya. <clears throat> so, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, thank you very much for joining. Um, we in the last few sessions we've described, tried to describe a little bit about the abodes of the uh, Supreme Lord, and we've discussed um, Golok Bindavan, which is really extraordinary. And in this uh, Golok chart, uh, Golok Bindavan is situated here. He said that Golok Bindavan. This is this is not uh, uh, made to measure <clears throat> or to scale rather. Uh, Golok Bindavan is bigger than all of the spiritual world, the rest of the spiritual world, by including Vaikuntha and Ayodhya, etc., and the material worlds. It's bigger than all of it put together. So you can see the size, which must be absolutely humongous. And um, we discussed how. Uh, the uh, ways the Golok uh, uh, is organized is like a lotus petal in the roll in the middle is situated Radha Krishna and the petals, the initial petals are the gopis and then the manjaris and then those in the vatsalya bhav like that. And it's also surrounded by um weep ocean which we talked about yesterday which is the ocean of uh, milk uh, cow's milk Surabi's cow's milk and also within the shweta deep is uh, uh, located dwaka mathura and jagannath puri and also Navadweep is a uh, mayapur is a very important part of the go of the lotus so, and then we saw that the, the different protectors, uh, the Chatur view, the first Chatur view uh, incarnations of the Lord are present here. And uh, the protectors, the 10 directions, the Vedas, um, all of these things are present. So, uh, today we wanted to go to the next level down from Golok. So here is uh, the material world where we live. And this is just one universe. Of course, there are millions of universes simultaneously present. And then we have above the material world, there's Mahesh Dham, Kailash, Shivlok. Beyond Shivlok is um, the Vaikuntha planets, also the Brahma Jyoti, within which the Vaikuntha planets are situated. And then the beyond the Vaikuntha planets is Ayodhya, and then we have Golok. So today we want to look at Ayodhya. <coughs> Ram, Lakshman, Bharat, Chatugna. They expand from the first Chaturview. And they are all Vishnu Tattva. Some people believe that only Ram is Supreme Lord. But actually they are all Supreme. They're all Vishnu Tattva. But the three... Lakshman Bharat Sadugna, they are servitors of Ram Chandra. They're God, but they're servitor gods. They serve Ram. So here we go. From Krishna comes Balaram, the first expansion. From him comes the first Chatur view. So this is Chatur means four. The four incarnations, expansions, avatars. So Vasudev is uh, regarded to be Rama Chandra, incarnated as Rama Chandra. Shankarshan is Lakshman, Padumna is Bharat, and Aniruddha is Shatugna. So this is how the four of them um, correspond. The four brothers correspond to the Chaturvyu avatars. So they all are Vishnu Tattva. Very important to understand. They're all God. They're all Godhead. Ayodhya is located between Golok and uh, Vaikuntha. So this is uh, in that huge Golok chart. This is where Ayodhya is situated. And we can see here, Sitara Lakshman. And this is the Vaikuntha planets. And above the Vaikuntha, above Ayodhya is Golok down. What's the mood in Ayodhya? <clears throat> it's 
much more of a worship, worshiping mood. Aishwarya is very much prominent, much more prominent than even in Dwaka. See, Dwa Dwaka, there is regard for the Lord, for Krishna as their Lord and Master, but there's still some familiarity because Krishna is considered to be part of their family, Yadav, the Yadav family. So although Krishna is the head of the family, um, they still have that uh, mood that Krishna is our relative. But it, the, or the worship or the mood of how they relate with Krishna is, um, there is um, the mood of opulence, the mood of worship, Aishwarya. <clears throat> but in a yodhya, it's much more, much more intense, the mood of that this is the Supreme Lord and um, the mood is very formal. That we can contrast with Gokul. Gokul, the mood is very, very informal. The Lord is my lover. The Lord is my child. The Lord is my friend. And so the mood is much more that He's one of ours, he's one of us. Whereas in Dwaka, the mood is, yes, he's one of us, but he's uh, the head of the family. In Gok Golok, that mood is not there. He's not the head of the family, he's one of us. And Krishna loves that, uh, that mood of the, uh, the Golok Basis, or the Baj Basis, mm -hmm. because they see him as one of their own. And he sees them as one of his own as well. So um, in Vayodhya, the mood of Ashwarya is much more prominent than in Dwaka, where although opulent, the Lord was considered part of the family. <clears throat> and the rasa in uh, the taste in Ayodhya is one of Dasya. Predominantly, my, this is my Lord and I am his servant. For example, Hanuman. Hanuman's mood was very much, whatever the Lord wants, I will do. So that, that was his mood. That was his uh, bhakti. And wonderful bhakti it is too. Guru Mahaji really loved that, uh, uh, that mood of Hanuman. <laughs> and in Dwarka, there was some Sakya with Dasyaras mixed. So Sakya is friendship. So for example, we can perhaps look to the relationship with um, a crew, a crew and Krishna's relationship. There was some element of friendship, although a crew was older, and Krishna actually respected a crew as uncle. Um, maybe that's not such a good example. Uh, Udav would be another example. Udav's mood was that of uh, friendship with Krishna. He was his cousin. Krishna would value Udav's opinion. Whenever Krishna made a decision, he would consult with Udav. This was how the Lord valued his friend. And Udav loved Krishna very, very much, and vice versa. But the, the, the friendship was also uh, tinged with Dasya, because uh, Udav understood the position of the Supreme Lord. So it was mixed. It wasn't just friendship, but it was uh, the mood of, you are my Lord, as well. Whereas in Golok, the mood of the Sakyas, yes, Krishna might be something special. He might even be God, but it doesn't matter. That's secondary to our friendship. He's my friend. <laughs> and there, there was really no barriers um, to how one would relate with their friend Krishna. Whereas in Ayodhya, there's a barrier. Oh, sorry, in Dwarka, there was a barrier. They couldn't, uh, they weren't that familiar with the Supreme Lord. Or they didn't have that intimacy of friendship that they have in Golok. So, um, and um, from an, an analytical point of view, the mood and relationships in Golok are considered to be higher than those in Dwaka, those in Ayodhya. But of course, for that person who is in relation with Krishna, in, according to those different moods, that, that relationship is supermost. Um, 
So Uddhav's relationship with Krishna uh, was perfect for him. But if we look at it from an analytical point of view, from <clears throat> how relationships are graded in, within the spiritual world, his relationship with uh, Krishna is, is considered to be inferior to that of, say, uh, Madhu Mangal or Sridhar, uh, one of the Gopas in, in Golok. But uh, in one sense, it doesn't really matter because one, it's one's own relationship with God, with Krishna, that is the most important for that person. Sorry, just... Uh... Okay. Okay. So, let's have a look. The devotees of Ram who worship Lord Ram to the, to the core of their heart, they will go to this planet, Ayodhya, in the spiritual world, as servant. His mood and relationship is different from Krishna, and also from Vishnu. Vidasyaras is prominent. So the mood in Ayodhya, what is it like? It's um, in Vaikuntha, the, the, the distinction between Vishnu and his devotees is very, very clear. He's a master and devotees are servants. And that is the relationship they want, they love. For them, that's the best relationship. So, and, but the mood in, in Ayodhya is somewhat little bit different from that. Although Ram is God, still he's a very personable God. Um, where there's a fairly intimate relationship, a bit more than in Vaikuntha, but not nowhere near Golok, where it's very informal. And an example can be given of the relationship that Sugreen has with Ram. In one sense, they're on an equal platform because Sugreen was king, king of the Vandras, and Ramachandra was king of um, Ayodhya. So they had a relationship which was on a par in one sense. And Ram would consider Sugreen as brother. Or they had a relationship as in the Sakya mood. But that relationship was still informal. It was not a very formal relationship. So Sugreen couldn't jump on the back of Ram and whip him. <laughs> that wouldn't happen because that wasn't the nature of their relationship. But in, in Golok, that would happen if that was the nature of the relationship <laughs> between the devotee and the Lord. So in Ram, in Ayodhya, that, that there's a bit of a formality to the friendship relationship. Another person you could argue that they had a somewhat of a Sakya relationship was uh, Vibhishan. Uh, Vibhishan and Ramachandra. Ramachandra would ask for advice from Vibhishan and Vibhishan would give the advice on how to defeat Ravan. <laughs> but again, Vibhishan's mood was very much um, on a servit. It was, it was Sakya, but it was tinged with Dasya, Dasyaras. So Sakya is friendship, but it was tinged with the mood of servitor. So that's the, the difference between the moods uh, in Ayodhya and in the Vaikuntha <clears throat> and in Golok. Devotees know the position of Krishna and cherish Ram, like Anuman and Murari Gupta. So these are fantastic examples of devotees of Ramachandra. They know what the position of Krishna is. I think, I don't know this story very well, but I just know a little remnant of it that at one point Hanuman was taken before Krishna and he saluted the Lord, but he said, Ram is my Ishtadev. <laughs> but the example of Murari Gupta is a little bit more prominent in my mind. One time Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Murari Gupta, you are always chanting the name of Ram. I want you to change that to the name of Krishna now. Don't chant the name of Ram chant the name of Krishna. 
And Murari Gupta was very humble, very submissive servant of Chitani. He said, yes, I will try. So he went home and he was really struggling. He came before the Lord in the morning and he said, I have to commit suicide. Why? Chitani Mahaprabhu asked. Because I can't give up Ram. I've tried all night to think of Krishna, but I cannot give up my Ram, so I might as well give up my life. Otherwise, I'm disobeying your order. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became so pleased with Murari Gupta. No, Murari Gupta, you have proven your worth to me. You are no different from Hanuman. And your Ishdev is Ram. I was just testing you. <laughs> so even one may understand the position of Krishna as perhaps being on a spiritual, analytical point of view, higher relationship than that of Ram. It doesn't matter. One's love is with Ram. One's love stays with Ram. It doesn't shift from Ram to Krishna. So this is the nature of the, the bhakta. So, very interesting. <clears throat> it's very interesting, our Guru Maharaj, you, you can never figure him out. When it was Ram Nomi, he would be you would think that he's definitely a Ram Bhakta. When he was just, Shri Krishna didn't ask me, you'd think he's definitely a Krishna Bhakta. You can never quite work out where, who was his Ishdev, but I think it was Bal Gopal. <laughs> but to pin Guru Maharaj down to ask him exactly who is your Ishdev, you never really got a, <laughs> he wouldn't really reveal the secrets within his heart. So that's the uh, description of Ayodhya. Any questions, any comments? Anybody like to uh, say anything that they, they may have heard from Guru Maharaj um, or perhaps uh, anything that I've said which doesn't necessarily make too much sense? Anybody like to share anything? Okay, we can we can stop there today because uh, Vaikuntha uh, is going to take quite some time. Um, <coughs> just have a look. <coughs> By Kunta, there's some very elaborate descriptions in the Srimad Bhagavad Puran. And uh, we can look at that uh, tomorrow uh, in the next, in the, maybe a day or two, a couple of days. Very interesting descriptions of Vaikuntha and how the devotee, this is something I'd like to share actually. Um, he can serve in Vaikuntha in five different levels of liberation. <laughs> Salokya, which is residing with Lord Narayan in this planet, Samip, Samipya, being an associate of the Lord, Sarupya, having a four-handed form, same as the, as the Supreme Lord. So if we see in this picture, this painting, you can see there's Vishnu, Narayan is here, but then the devotees also have similar forms as Narayan. <laughs> And then there's uh, Shash Sarasti, uh, attaining opulences like that of Supreme Lord. And then there's Sayujya, merging into the Brahman influences. So this is something that devotees don't want to do. But these other four are, are there as options if devotee wants. But the pure devotee, especially in the line of the Gaudiya tradition, they, they don't even care for any of these. This is the most ex extraordinary thing about the devotee. They don't want to, they want to just serve the Lord. They don't want any opulence, which distinguishes them from anybody else. So I wanted to stop there. And ask if there's any questions or any comments.
Otherwise, we can go to the Nashinga uh, Kavach. Ayudhya Dham Kijay, Ramachandra Bhagwan Kijay, Thai Gorupan